Let's learn about the actions that are being taken to protect wildlife and the major participants in that action. You're watching Ramping Up Your English. This is segment two of episode 71. Now, while you have to go out into the ocean to see some coastal birds, you don't have to charter a boat to see gulls. Off the shores of rocky outcroppings, like those in Oregon, Washington, and California, gulls are often seen when looking out into the ocean. There seem to be few rocks without seagulls present. Now, they seem to be present on every beach, and most gulls are not shy around people. Seagulls seem to be plentiful, so it's easy to dismiss them as just a seagull. It's important to remember that there are many species of seagulls, and not all of them are common or numerous. Now, we think of gulls always living on the beach, but gulls are often encountered inland. Some abide in both habitats living part of the year by the sea and the other months well inland, migrating between the different habitats. Now, many species of seagulls find protection on sea islands, sometimes sheer rocks in the ocean on which they lay their eggs and raise their young. Some of the gulls are also notorious for stealing the eggs of other shorebird uh, species. Seagulls provide the distinct medium pitch call that is so much a part of You've the coastal watching. experience. Their wings are exquisitely designed for staying aloft on the wind current, as well as making those sharp turns and swoops that they make when they're flying. Seagulls inspired writer Richard Bach to create Jonathan Livingston's Seagull, a beautiful and soulful story alluding to human potential. It's a type of quest story. Now, his work was interpreted for the big screen and for musical creation by singer-songwriter Neil Diamond and Lee Haywood. Neil Diamond developed an entire concept album to the Jonathan Livingston Seagull soundtrack. The story and the music touch many people deeply. Now, herring seagulls are the most numerous of the gull species. Herring gulls have been observed eating each other's eggs. Herring gulls even attack one of my favorite birds, the tufted puffin. Now these coastal birds, the tufted puffins, do pretty much amazing things. They're distinguished by the shape of their beaks. Puffins eat fish, and this wide beak will hold several small fish at a time, enough to feed their chicks. Now notice the tufts on the male birds they grow these during the breeding season. The tufts distinguish them from the East Coast puffins. Now, while puffins nest and raise their young in the coastal cliffs, they spend most of their lives in the water. When the young birds first plunge into that sea, that's when they're most vulnerable to predation by gulls.